All right, so this says, originally a harvest festival, he said, Shavuos, Pentecost, commemorates the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. The holiday is one of three biblical pilgrimage feasts, the others being Sukkot, which is Tabernacles, and Passover, which we celebrate the resurrection. Shavuos, if I'm saying it the way he did, is Hebrew for weeks and comes seven weeks from Passover. Anybody remember the word Jubilee in the Old Testament? Yeah. What was Jubilee about? You kind of know just from the word, don't you? The word means to celebrate. And it happened every 50 years. So uh, long, longer teaching than I'm going to do today. But God really cares about cycles. And that's another thing that Chuck Pierce talks about a lot. We have, uh, again, videos up on our YouTube channel. If you want just little pieces of his teaching on this subject, you can get it in shorter clips. And, uh, you know, you have to understand the times and the seasons. You have to be like the sons of Issachar and recognize the season that you're in and operate. So you wouldn't take a snow shovel out in July because there's no snow around here in July, right? And hopefully you don't walk outside in your bathing suit in December because you know the times and the seasons. Similarly, in the spirit, you want to know the times and the seasons and be alert. So every seven is the completion of a cycle, and every eight is the beginning of a new cycle, right? Seven days in a week, and then it starts over again. Well, seven sevens was another form of completion, and then another Sabbath rest would come. And when they did it in years, it would be 50 years. Seven sevens of years is the Jubilee, and they would have a celebration, and debts would be forgiven. And we just talked about that today, not even knowing that that's what we were going to be talking about. But the freedom that comes from the Lord is debts in many other ways, isn't there? He told them, you're going to preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins. All of us, when we got saved, we had to say to the Lord, I'm really sorry for the way I lived my life before I knew you. I, I'm, I'm ashamed in some ways of what I did. But now that I found out I'm forgiven, I have a fresh start. I don't have to live under that shame of those old mistakes that I made. There's been a redemption process that happened better than Shawshank's redemption, amen? This is the Jesus redemption that says you are forgiven no matter what sins you've committed, no matter how decadent your lifestyle was, I still forgive you. There's no sin that keeps you too far away from me that I can't reach down and take you out of that pit. I mean, that's really good news, isn't it? A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people that don't know the Lord are still walking in their shame. So I just thought this was really interesting that if you look at 500-year cycles, 50 years would be one jubilee, but every 10, there are significant things that happen. Again, I'm not, I didn't do all the research on the exact dates of all these things, but I have a sense that it's accurate enough that I was willing to at least put the principle out there for you, is that God does big things in the year of jubilee, right? So birth of Abraham, 10, uh, 2,500 years later, right? So, so, so 1050s later is when the Exodus happened. 1050s later is when Solomon's temple is dedicated. 1050s later is they're coming out of uh, Babylon and they're restoring the temple and the decree to rebuild Jerusalem goes into effect. And then the big jubilee is when Jesus came, lived his life, died, and was resurrected. And before he died and was resurrected, we have this amazing quote that he does in Luke chapter 4, but I'm giving you from the original. What he was quoting from was from Isaiah 61, and I know a lot of you know this because we pray it all the time, don't we? This is an awesome portion of Scripture that you can dig down and study in. Jesus says this in Luke chapter 4, but Isaiah said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives. That was Jubilee. Jesus was effectively saying, you today are hearing the completion of this come to pass. We can celebrate the, the Jubilee of the Lord because captives are going to be set free. <laughs> through He didn't say this, but he could have said, through my ministry, captives are going to be set free. Not just today, but 2,000 years from now in Basking Ridge, New Jersey, they're still going to be talking about this. And as long as I'm alive, I'm still going to be talking about the freedom that we have to open up the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And what Trisha said earlier, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. Can you just open your arms and just receive that from the Lord today? Lord, I thank you this promise holds true for me today. It's a first-person promise 
For my ashes, there's a great exchange for your beauty. And I receive it right now. By faith, I receive it. I'm not going to choose to major on the minors. I'm not going to focus on the ashes in my life. I'm going to focus on your love for me. I'm going to focus on the power of your spirit that's on the inside that renews me and brings fresh life to me. Like that stump that was cut down, you give me the scent of water and I am restored and you bring me back to life again regardless of the pain that I've been through. Beauty for ashes. The oil of mourning, I'm sorry, oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's a great exchange, church. That's a great exchange. I get beauty for ashes. I get joy instead of mourning and grieving. And I get a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. And, you know, part of what that message that Bill Johnson was talking about, that woman that lost her stuff was making declarations. I want my stuff back. You know, I want it back. And, and something that we said this morning in worship is related to this. It's like, if I'm expecting something, I prepare in advance and I set the table for that guest before they're even coming home. And if, I'm, if I want to have a child and I'm having a problem having a child, I build a new room on my house before I get pregnant. That's the point. See, you're operating as if you already had the thing that you're waiting for because that's what faith is. It's the substance of what you're hoping for and evidence of what you can't see yet. But you believe that you're going to see it, and that's why we built that room on, because we're expecting a child. Amen. Anybody here pregnant with a vision? Amen. Nobody wants to raise their hand when you say pregnant in any kind of thing. Like, <laughs> wait a minute, what am I getting myself into if I raise my hand? I said with a vision, pregnant with a vision. I hope we all are. I mean, that's really a whole other prayer. If you're not, you should pray that you would be. That helps us. That's part of the energy that gets us going in the morning is what, what is my vision? What is my mission? Nothing's going to take me off the mission that God gave me for my life.